Welcome to Victory Life Today with Al and Angie Burke. A place to connect, to grow, and to cultivate your faith in Christ. Together, we'll learn how to stand in victory each and every day. Live a life set ablaze by faith, filled with purpose. Live life above your circumstance. Welcome to Victory Life Today. I'm Al Burke. And I'm Angie Burke. Thanks so much for joining us today. You know, we want to encourage you to check out our website, right, Al? It's Mm -hmm. a great website, and we've got a lot there to offer to you. And, uh, you know, we've got some teachings, some videos available for you on that website. And we also have so many things that you can purchase, and and it would help you grow in the Lord. You know, these 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 are good teachings. These are great. And if you stick with us every day, you'll get a lot. But, but they're also... It's so awesome to have a book where you could just yeah. like, you know, we finished, we just finished a book, a Bible study, and uh, that book is so yellowed out for me. And this is the third time I've read this book. It was a certain book I was reading. And, uh, and I go to those yellow uh, marked out spots and mm-hmm. get the gist of what it was trying to say after I read it the third time than I do. But we have so many things available. And, you know, one of the things that I always encourage people to do is always to be uh, like Al says, have a platform of thanksgiving. That's what I. That's where you start. From. Yeah, and you know, every morning when I wake up, I say, "Good morning, Jesus. Thank you that I'm healed, and just thank you." You know, and uh, so we have on our website one of the things we have. Uh, it's called the gratitude journal, and my, you know, my daughter has a gratitude journal too, and it's just you know an empty booklet, and we have other colors available for for men and whatever and it's just awesome to keep a record of what God has done in your life you look and you could go back you could share it with others and it's just it reminds you once you put this down on paper it kind of cements it and makes it even more real you know you could use it as confessions i mean i have a book of confessions that i just Sometimes exactly. when you're moving ahead in your faith and you're kind of got a new challenge or a new faith challenge you could say it that way you need to go back into the things that God's done in your life previous to sort of build your faith and say, well, he yes. came through on that one. Why isn't he? We're just moving along. We're going right. to, that kind of gets into what we're going to talk about. We're just moving along. It's just the same thing. It's just operate by faith, believe God. and That's right. <clears throat> That's right. And we also have available this book called Hidden Treasures Revealed. And I am fond of this book because this is all, this is not on one particular topic. It's got several different different topics. Every chapter is a different teaching. And that's good because you can stay on one thing and, and, and renew your mind on that one chapter, on that one thought, on that one truth over and over and over again. And it really keeps it going. I like stuff like this, Al, because to me, it's not uh, long and, and, and okay, another week on this, another week on this. No, it's different topics yeah. that you could read, you know, and it's yeah. really awesome. Great. But we, you could find this and more, you know, so many more things available on victorylifeministries.org. That is the name of our website. And we would also encourage you to become a giver, um, give into this ministry, give to another ministry, whatever, but make sure, you know, giving is very, very important to the Lord and he honors giving and he promises to give it back to you a hundredfold return. So you could give a one-time donation, which we appreciate, or or, or a regular partner, or monthly giver, whatever you prefer, anything would help. We thank you for it in advance, because, you know, we really couldn't do this without you guys. So we do appreciate all our partners, mm-hmm. and we want to thank you and thank those who are uh, thinking of coming on with us and helping us to reach the world with the gospel you know, of Jesus. You know, God will bless you, and he'll reward you for your giving. And it's, you, you need to learn, as I talk about a platform of thanksgiving, you need to approach this from a platform of giving and receiving. And this mm-hmm. is what people miss. They miss the receiving thing. Yes, they do. They think they're supposed to just give, 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 and they never receive. And if you do receive, well, whatever, or you got to work harder or something like that. God wants to get it to you. He wants you to receive. So learn how to be a good receiver. I know people that have said things like, oh, no, no, I don't want anything from God for this. Well, you're out. <laughs> you're not going to get anything. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I, right. you need to name your harvest. Your money that right. you put in is your seed. And you speak over your seed what your harvest is going to be. Right. And God will honor that. 
we always give naming our harvest, right? right. Oh, even do. if it's cash, we'll name the harvest. So I want to encourage you to be a giver just yes. in your life, even if you're not going to give it here. Give it to your church you go to or give it wherever you give it because it'll bless your life financially. You'll grow in the Lord and uh, it's all good stuff that That's God right. has. Everything God has for you is good. It's so good. You know, it's, it's, so good. it's not the Ten Commandments. It's ten blessings. Right. Do them and be blessed. That's right. Um, you got to see it from a platform of constant thanksgiving, constant. You thank God for the earth and the sky and the grass and everything you have mm -hmm. and everything you've done and everything he's going to do in your life. And if it's <clears throat> if life is pretty bad, find something to be thankful for. There's it's, always something. There's always something. Yes, there is. Well, good. That's great. Now, today we are going to be talking about how to know God's plan for your life. Because so many people want to know. They know. They actually know that God has a plan for them, but they don't know what it is. They don't know how to tell. They don't know, you know, how to start the whole process. No. And can we really know, Al, Why what not? his plan is for our life? And and will we know it when it shows up is what, what I'm trying to say. If God doesn't tell us in advance, are we going to know it? Are we going to be able to tell it when it shows up? Well, you know? <laughs> It's kind of like this. If God has a plan for your life and he has a plan for everybody, and that doesn't mean everybody has a pulpit and everybody has a TV ministry, but God's got something for you to do. But it's kind of like, well, what does he want me to, what does he want me to do? It's, it's, it's kind of like, okay, God, what do you want me to do? And God goes, I'm not telling you. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. And that's the attitude that goes on out there. It's kind of like, don't you get this? God wants, so, he has something for you to do, and he wants to tell you what it is. It's not that difficult to find, follow, and fulfill well, you, God's will for your life. When you were in the construction business you and your men came in, you had plans of yeah. houses. I mean, written plans, you know, the whole the whole thing. You wanted to show them what it, right. what they had to do right. that day. You I did a whole layout them. for them, and I said, okay, this is what you're going to do today. This, right. this, this, and this. Hey, the key to that is you only did it one day at a time. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing with God. You're not yes. getting a whole lot more than that. So, but I, when I had people working for me, I told them every day what I wanted done today. And this is do this, do this, do this. So God's the same way. He has something for you, something for you to do. But right. <clears throat> there is a training process. There's a yeah. learning process. Nobody just walks into a lawyer's office and get hires, hired as a lawyer without going to law school because you don't know what you're doing. You don't know anything. So God will put you through a training and there'll be time and we're going to get into some of that, yeah. I, I see. Well, the first thing that you need to know is that when you were born, when you were created, God created you with his purpose in mind. You know, we don't even realize it, but he made you with certain abilities, certain gifts, and a certain personality to fulfill that plan, which we don't we don't really think. We think, oh my gosh, we're gonna have to work really hard at this, but really no. He create if you're following the the plan God has for you, he already gave you everything you need to accomplish this plan. Now there is some or to fulfill your assignment. There is some training, and we'll go into that, but what is it that God has planned for you here? And how can you know? How can you be sure it's what he planned? You know, Al, years ago, somebody asked me, I was working at a church and somebody asked me, I think it was a bit sarcastically because uh, I don't know what it was, but he said, what's your gift? You know, and here I am working uh, in Sunday school, working in children's programs, creating material to teach yeah. and to, to minister to the kids and the youth, and but but I never really gave thought about what my gift was or right. what God was calling me to do. So I just basically said, um, "Well, I don't really know." But little did I know that I was doing it, but but I didn't I didn't put it together as God gifting me to do it. I was just doing it because God called me to do it. So, but and 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 another thing I want you to know before we get into it, there is a difference between. The ultimate purpose for which you were created, okay, it's between, and what you've been destined for, there's a difference between that and all the other plans leading up to that, all the other uh, things you might be doing 
for God leading up to it. There's a difference. There's an ultimate plan, Al. I remember Andrew Womack said, I don't know when it was, but 60, 50 years into it, the Lord told him, you're finally tapping into what I created you to do. And Al and I personally, we feel that this is what, we're not near the end of our life by no means, but this is what we were created to do. And everything else that led up to that was was 100% training so that when we were ready, he could put us in this position and teach together. That's what we are. We were teachers in the body of Christ. Yeah, that's what we are. We're teachers. So we teach you how to do this because we went out and did this 40 years ago, learning from the scripture, being trained what God has for us. And it's one day at a time, one step at a time. He doesn't right. really give you the end, or if he gives you something, he might give you something further down to just sort of lead you that there is something for you to do. But in the meantime, he's got right. these little steps, this little <clears throat> learning process as you go along, and it builds you up and it makes you stronger. Right. Some of these people right. that, you know, they start out in the gospel and then they just shoot into stardom. 10, 20 years later, they're crashed, they're done, they're gone because yeah. they didn't have the maturity. They didn't have the prospered soul they needed for the position God had them to go into. Right, right. And because of that, <clears throat> if they got there too fast, it, it destroyed them. You know, I think what I want you to know is just because you're going through these seasons of training, it doesn't mean you're not in God's plan. It doesn't mean you're not fulfilling his will. He moved me. Well, Al's going to get into what he did, and then I'll show you what I did from one place to another. It doesn't mean until I reached the ultimate plan. It doesn't mean all that wasn't his plan. So don't ever get frustrated. As long as you have peace, knowing that you're doing what God told you to do, you're right in the middle of his will for you. And if you don't have that peace and you think something's wrong, you maybe want to go check with the Lord and see what you're supposed to be doing. Right. You know, I started out, we were kind of in the construction industry, but I did, I was a plumber, but I did projects, okay? Brand new homes and <clears throat> yeah. communities. Communities. It so anyway, big. so that was going on uh, along, and I was learning about God and all of that, and I was learning how to live the... I was learning how to do everything in this world godly in spite of them. And mm -hmm. it wasn't all that easy because you were the cog that didn't fit. Everybody, you know, they, they just ran with whatever the world wanted to do and everybody was yeah. in on it and you weren't. Yeah. You were like a problem. So anyway, I was running my business. I remember that. And then what, years, the Lord told me to just, when I got saved, he said, just stay in the business and just keep working. But I learned and I grew. And every night I would spend time reading the Bible, studying the Bible, spending time with God for years and years and years and years. And one day he said, it's over. I'm calling you into full-time ministry. Be and I had to follow. Yeah, I did. had to quit. I had to give it all up and say, okay, I'm gone. I'm out of here. And you just got this job. Or you were bidding on it? Or well, that was, no, that was the last job that I had that I got. Right. Right. Well, the last project. But you hadn't done it yet. I just did the models. Right, right. That's what I'm trying and to say. And that was when the Lord said, this whole thing's over. So it was a little hard, you know. I mean, it was all set up and running and to tell him, well, I'm, I'm not going to finish this project. They were like, you're kidding, right? Wow. You know? Wow. They didn't even believe me. So anyway, and I also had a propane gas company that I had at the same time. And yes. I had to sell the propane, get out of everything. It took me years to get out of it. I was learning how God does things, and I could see his work ahead of time, how he was wow. moving and how we got into the propane business and how we added that to what we already had and how we grew it into something. And it was all God's blessing on me. I didn't really know that at the time. Yeah. Anyway, I was at a level in Christianity where I could operate. I don't think I could do then what I'm doing now. Yes. And, you know, I went on, and I, I, I uh, sold everything because he told me to get out. And I wound up, believe it or not, running a muffler shop. And you said, well, what does that got to do with anything? God, God told, told me to you do to it. buy it. Yep. And I had more money than I knew what to do with. And the people that were working in there said, what, were you crazy? You're working here and you, you got all this money? I said, well, God told me to do this. doesn't matter how much money I have. You know, Al, before you go any further to start working with the churches, I just want to Tell everyone that 
Uh, you know, he worked uh, in construction. He ran a propane gas business and he ran a muffler shop. He owned a muffler shop and ran it. it was there every single day. It, if people might think, oh, I'm only in God's plan or I'm only in his will if it's a church related thing. And that is so not true. What would the rest of the world be? What would we be doing? Not everybody can work in church. And you God know? needs you doing something. Yes, he, he needs, needs you, you out uh, in the marketplace. Uh, That's where he, he needs, needs you. you out there providing services for people that right. need your help. Right. And it doesn't mean you're not in his will because it's not Christianized. Right. It's completely wrong. That's where he wants us in the world, but not of the world. So that we can show the light of Jesus. And I think that's there. a big mistake a lot of people make. They get saved and born again, and they think the next day they have to be in ministry. Now, maybe some people, yeah, but for most people, you need to stay where you are and learn how God operates and grow. Yes. I think a lot of people that graduate from any Bible college, the first thing they want to do, which I've noticed, is... They want to start a church, and that's admirable, and that's good, and they might even feel led. But you and I think that whatever they learned in Bible college, they need to go out into the world and live it and practice it. And, and fight and the devil. Do what God told you to do while the devil's fighting you every step of the way. Right. And learn how to negotiate in all of that and operate and how to gain and, and win. And a lot of all my business skills we use in ministry. Yes, yes. Because of what I learned, I learned how to operate wow. these things. And basically, it could probably operate any business to some degree mm -hmm. um, because I know how that all that works. Right. And I know That's how to good. deal with the people, you know, the, the people working for you and the people I worked for. You, you learn all of this, how to do this. Yeah. So when you're in the ministry, you already have all those skills. That's good. And to me personally, I don't know, I'm not saying this is everybody, but to me, if you get saved and born again, the odds are, I'm not saying everybody, but the odds are God's not going to use you in terms of a pulpit or some kind of ministry for 20 or 30 years. Hmm. He's going to grow training. your character. He's going to yeah. train you. You have to learn how to know when the devil's attacking. We were just talking about something. You have to know when the devil's attacking. You have to see it. And you got to go through these things like maybe in the secular world, and, and I'd say it this way, get your head beat in and, and go, oh, that wasn't so smart. Before you go into me, we, we were just talking about yeah. this guy had a church and um, big church, big time guy, and he got lured away by some female. She took him away and I think she set him up. I think these guys are set up and destroyed the whole thing. Well, once you've been out in the world, you see this coming. You see it coming. You see the devil bringing it in nice and easy. Yeah. And you just see it for what it is because right. you've already been through it in the secular world. So <clears throat> there's a lot of preparation, and I'll say it this way. Let's say you have the gift of singing. That's a gift. Yeah, it is. You need to learn need. the notes. You need to learn how to operate with people in a band. Most people that are musicians in a band say it's a very difficult thing to get everybody there and to get everybody on board to learn, to do a song because everybody thinks they're God's gift. So there's a lot of training that goes on with all of this. The gift isn't everything. Right, right. You know what I mean? And yeah. I know somebody else is very, very smart. And she can just, she thinks her intelligence will pull her out of anything. But it won't. There's a learning process. Right. So go ahead. So what else did you do? You served in some churches. You you preached on Saturday night for Five I served in churches a, for years and years and years, became yep. an elder, did whatever they called me to do. And then finally, one day, someone said, would you please come to, over to my church, which was a different church, and preach for us on a Saturday night. We want to do praise and worship. See, I was ready for that right. when that came. And even then, I think about it, God gave me a lot of revelation and yeah. a lot of wisdom. And I really thought I was pretty cool and I was great. And I, you know, like everyone should be as smart as me. You know how Paul talks about the thorn in the flesh. So mm -hmm. we yeah. we learn, and now I know more then than I ever knew. I'm known now. I know more now than I did then, and now I have no. There's no pride at all because I've learned that I was operating in my pride. And you know, when I was growing up, I was very, I was actually very, very shy. I mean, shut down, shy at three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Really, really shy. You would never know it. But uh, then uh, when I 
got in my early 20s, I started teaching exercise classes. I began children ministry in my home. I preached occasionally. I led Sunday school. Um, you know, I worked at a sign company. I mean, that wasn't a, a Christian thing, you know. Um, I did children's ministry, high school ministry, adult ministry. I did all of this. And, and then I took a year and went to Karis Bible College. I mean, I took it online. Uh, I min we, I ministered. We both did one on one with people. And so we both did all of these different things. And we knew we were always in the center of his will for us. But honestly, during that time, I never thought of the ultimate plan. Was I was just, well, I wasn't even in my mind. It was like, I'm just going, doing what God told me today, do what God tells me tomorrow. I'm just here doing what God wants. Right. I never thought of an ultimate plan. I we, thought it'd go on like that till the end. Right. But now that he, we're on television and we're doing these shows, this is what God has spoken to us, that this is what I ultimately created you for. You know, and then we know that we're good. Yeah, and we know we're right. I, I really, you know, I hear people teach things. We were talking about Paul's thorn in the flesh on an earlier show, yeah. how people have taught it wrong. Well, we've been through all of this. So what we're teaching, I know this is on the money, the things that we teach. These things are correct yes. according to what the Bible says. Yeah. And you know what? Don't despise the, the journey to get where God has you to be. It takes years. Yes, and patience, yes. It takes years and, and learning and mm -hmm. patience and growing and learning and things go wrong to get you to where God ultimately... So don't despise the day of small beginnings. That's right. Just keep doing what God told you to do and do it in a godly manner. That's awesome. Well, let's go to the scriptures and see where this shows it. And it's act, Acts 13, 4 to 5. So Saul and Barnabas and their assistant Mark were directed by the Holy Spirit to go to Seleucia. And so they go to Seleucia. But from there, they sailed to Cyprus. Okay. When they arrived at, at Salamis, they went to the synagogues and declared the word of God. So they obviously felt led in their spirits to go to the Seleucia. Okay, so that's where he wants us to go. That's what they're saying. This is where we're going. We will go and we will preach the word there. But when they got there, the Holy Spirit led them to get on a boat and go to Cyprus. I and know. it was there. Yeah, it was there that they preached the word of God. You see the progression? They knew they were supposed to preach the gospel, but sometimes God takes you on a journey to get there. Okay, and, but it's all in his plan and it's all in his will and purpose for your life. And, you, you know, know, sometimes Paul knew he was led to go somewhere. He gets there and gets thrown in jail. Yeah. Wouldn't you say, well, how could that be local. God? You know, God would never send yes. me here. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm in trouble. You know, it must not right. have been God. I shouldn't be here. Right. Well, maybe it is God. I'm not saying going to jail is good or God right. sending you there. I'm just saying sometimes it doesn't look like it's God's plan, right. but it might be. You know, we're just encouraging you to be you know, stay connected, stay close. Where you're at. And stay close to the Holy Spirit to hear him. If you don't hear anything, then do the last thing God told you to do. That's what Al and I always say, right, Al? Today. And God always says, go about doing good. If you have no idea what to do, do what Jesus did. He went around doing good, healing all those that were oppressed of the devil. It's all you got to do, and you're fulfilling your plan right there. Right, right. You know, and, you know, Jesus never started a healing ministry. Right, I know. He just went around doing good. That's what I did for years and years and years. I just went around doing good, now, praying for people. You know, we want to say one thing because we're running out of time, and this is prophecy. People get a lot of people prophesying over them of what they're going to do, what they're called to do. You could speak on that, Al, about prophecy. If, if someone's prophetically spoken over you, I would say this. <clears throat> Unless God has already told you something, that same thing, then what that person is saying is a confirmation is what God's saying for you to do. Don't have someone out of the blue blindly walk up to you or you walk to them and they prophesy something over you and you quit your job and you're doing all these things. It's like, did God tell you? Well, 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 the prophet told me. No, did God tell you? Never accept a prophetic word that's going to change your life unless God has spoken to you right. personally first. That's right. And then when a prophet speaks over you, it's confirmation. And even if you don't feel like uh, it's confirmation, go to God and ask him. Is this, is this the beginning of something I should pray about? 
Or, you know, because sometimes just because a prophet says something doesn't mean it's going to happen. Right. A lot of times, even if it is a confirmation, you're going to have to start praying in start that area. doing what God wants you to That's do. That's right. But a lot of times people just take what prophets say and they run with it. And, yeah, you know, and if you're not mature enough to know this, you shouldn't be running with the prophecy because you obviously don't know what you're doing because the one prophet says, go uh, go to China. The other prophet says, go to India. Well, what do you do? And you know what, Al? I want to tell you, usually prophets, I heard this from a prophet, usually prophets give the end result of the situation, but there's a whole lot of training to do up to that end result. And what do we do? We go and we try to make the end result happen when there's a whole lot of training to do. You know, there's so much more we could talk about on this subject, but the bottom line is if you want to walk closely with God and you want His will, then really you can't miss it. Just stay close to Him and do the last thing He told you to do, and then every day is a new beginning with the Lord and He'll lead you and guide you to fulfill His will for your life. We want to thank you so much for joining us. And remember, victory is always yours through Jesus Christ. We will see you next time. Amen. Hey, we hope you enjoyed today's show. Thanks so much for joining us. Did you know your giving can create prosperity for you? When you know, when you give into God's kingdom and you're pouring finances into this ministry right here, we will take that money and pay our bills and we can prosper and we can get the word of God out to more people throughout the whole world. We really are worldwide now. And you can be a part of this and you'll get part of the reward that we get and God will bless you financially. That's right, it's important to put your seed into good ground, and this Victory Life Ministries right. is certainly good ground. So we do encourage you to give to Victory Life Ministries. You could go to our website, victorylifeministries.org. We appreciate anything and everything that you could do. Just press that donate button and become a recurring partner or just a one-time giver. It doesn't matter, we appreciate anything. And you know, when you partner with us, you will be getting the same rewards as us, and that is true. That's right. So today, Hey, go to VictoryLifeMinistries.org. Victory Life Ministries was founded to help you connect, grow, and flourish in a relationship with Jesus. Al and Angie Burke are committed to teaching the body of Christ how to walk in strength, in boldness, in love. Connect with us online today at VictoryLifeMinistries.org. You'll find the encouragement, inspiration, and resources you need to stand in victory each and every day. Join in on a growing community of believers that are partnering to bring these messages all over the world. With your help, we can make a change. We can shift the atmosphere. Live your best life. Live an effective life full of faith, hope, and vision. Live life above your circumstance.